with the dose that's injected into your patients, does that essentially like put the patient into a K-hole? Yeah, we do indeed use those doses. Welcome to The Bigger Trip. Hey Wu, it's Emma Bresky here. You're joining me on a deep dive into the ever-evolving world of psychedelics. Well, this is what we call the MDMA womb. With the haze of euphoria and everyone from ASAP Rocky to Elon Musk talking about the joy of hallucinogens, it's clear we're living through a psychedelic renaissance. Whether it's to find deeper connections, creative epiphanies, or improved mental health, it seems like mind-altering substances like LSD, psilocybin, and ketamine are everywhere, with one in 10 UK adults microdosing their way through lockdown. Child frogs. Yeah, for a bit. <laughs> I'm going on a journey to discover how and why young people are looking to psychedelics to get to know themselves inside out. In our first episode, we take on the hot topic of psychedelics and mental health. Come on, bro! Hi, Wu. <laughs> How's it going? Come on in. You first. Yeah. It's his house. I'm just living in it. We've been living here for how long now? A couple of years? I have my little, I don't know what this is. It's kind of like a little spiritual shelf, you know, like a witch's altar. <laughs> I think spirituality is becoming quite a thing, especially in my generation. I think people are starting to understand that it's a very individual journey. I've definitely noticed, even within my own circles, that my friends have been exploring psychedelics more and more in their own lifestyles. I think, generally speaking, psychedelics are being used as a tool to help people get to know themselves better. And, you know, even though the world of psychedelics is quite exciting, I also want to understand what are the sort of dangers to it? How do we know if we're actually using it in a safe way? And like, where do we learn that information? Hi, bud. Yay, yay. For me, my experience with drugs, I've always been someone that looks after other people, especially in environments that maybe isn't at home. If I'm not in a safe environment, I don't feel like I would participate. Yeah, I struggle giving up control. Come on, give me a kiss. Come here. No, you, 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 you. First up, I'm going to explore a hotly debated topic, psychedelics and mental health. The latest data from the ONS shows that depression rates have doubled since the pandemic began, forewarning a growing mental health crisis in the UK. A growing slate of research shows that psychedelics could alleviate PTSD, depression and addiction, leading to growing expectations that psychedelics could transform psychiatry. I'm on my way to Bristol to meet Dr. Ben Sessa, Chief Medical Officer at Awaken Life Sciences. It's the very first ketamine-assisted psychotherapy clinic in the UK. So I'm very curious to find out what happens behind their doors. Hey Ben, how's it Hi, going? Hello Emma. I'm going to give you an elbow. Yeah, yeah, good to meet you. Thanks for coming along. So, welcome to Awaken Life Sciences. We um, are an international biotech, psychedelic research and development and delivery company. So right. you're standing in one of our physical clinics mm -hmm. and we have grand plans to open a whole string of clinics. We're going to be the high street presence of psychedelic wow. medicine in the UK and Europe. What kind of treatments go on in your clinics? So it's a course of sessions, which include some sessions with the medicine, some non-drug psychotherapy sessions. Think of it as a psychedelic medicine service, ketamine now, MDMA and psilocybin coming soon. So what sort of illnesses or mental illnesses does your treatment usually cover? Depression, anxiety disorders, post-traumatic stress disorders, eating disorder, and uh, a range of different addictions. That's so interesting. So like you cure, say, like drug addictions with a psychedelic drug. Certainly people are talking about what they're calling this psychedelic renaissance, you know. Right. We're really seeing a massive explosion of use of psychedelic assisted therapies. Do you want to have a look around? Yeah, let's continue this let's elsewhere. <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> it's like a little hotel room, isn't it? Yeah, well this is what we call the MDMA room. <laughs> It's got to be warm, it's got to be comfortable. It's also deliberately kind of neutral. We right. haven't got pictures, we haven't got writing on the walls. Nothing triggering. It's very chic. Very Nordic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Scandy vibes. <laughs> yeah. On the day of the ketamine session, there's a little bit of talk therapy, first of all, for about 15 or 20 minutes. Then the patient settles into the bed with the eye shades on, and the nurse would come in and you'd have the injection into your arm, and the headphones go on and the eye shades go on. They listen to music. So you have to choose the music. Yes, they can't so be like, I want to listen to death metal. 
It feels like a very relaxing, gentle, dreamlike, sleepy, blissful experience. The word that people use more than anything else is weird, somewhat confusing in some ways. Often people describe geometric shapes, sense of movement, like a sort of roller coaster or being driven in a car or on a sea that's undulating. So with the dose that's injected into your patients, does that essentially like put the patient into a K-hole? So K-hole is a kind of anecdotal term that people use when they take so much ketamine that they're completely dissociated from their body. Right. And they really lose the power of speech and they lose the power of movement. And we do indeed use those doses. Have you ever had a patient that's had a bad experience or like a bad trip and been like, get me out of here. No, no, <laughs> okay. we haven't. Everybody has tolerated the medicine really well. Wow. Um, How many sessions have you done so far? We've done 20 or 30 sessions so far. We've only been open a few months. If you don't mind me asking. How much, how much would, say, a course of this kind of treatment? Eight weeks, is it? Yeah, so the initial eight-week course is £6,000, right. um, which involves four sessions with ketamine plus the other non-drug sessions. What we're doing with psychedelic therapy is we're getting to the root cause of problems. We're getting yeah. to the trauma, and we're providing, both physically and psychologically, a fertile ground for breakthrough and new experiences and new versions of self. Most psychedelics directly activate the serotonin receptors in the brain, which is the key hormone that stabilizes our mood, feelings of well-being, and happiness. It's this serotonin response that creates the altered states of consciousness known in the psychedelic experience, as well as kickstarting longer-term impacts on our mental health. It can help us begin to see the world and ourselves in it differently. Imagine the mind as a ski slope. Over time, it develops ridges and grooves that make it more difficult to ski freely around. And just like a ski slope, we too develop these ingrained thought patterns that over time become really firmly rooted and difficult to shift, meaning we end up going down the same path over and over again. And while this helps us navigate the world more efficiently, so we don't always have to work everything up from scratch, they become so dominant that it makes new ways of thinking difficult to reach the surface of our minds. These rigid beliefs often have negative bias, resulting in fears about the future, obsessions, or beliefs about one's body. But in the psychedelic experience, these are relaxed. The ski slope is smoothed out, which allows information to flow freely in new directions, influencing our ways of thinking and acting in the longer term. After visiting Awaken, I feel like it was really interesting to know that there are other forms of therapy now outside of just talking therapy. I think there's still a lot of research to be done on psychedelics in general. I just don't know realistically if it would be affordable for everybody. LeBron, what do you think? Hmm? What do you think about ketamine treatment? He's like, I could probably do with a day off, actually, from... Uh... <laughs> How's your mental health, huh? You're fine. You live here rent-free. You got it easy. Having seen what the medical psychedelic setting looks like, I'm interested in finding out about experiences that are a little more DIY. I'm meeting singer-songwriter Jay Gray, who has turned to psychedelics in an attempt to improve her own mental health. Hi, See baby. Hi. Oh, that's oh, no. no, no, no. You it's your first doggy. Who is he? First time meeting a dog. Friend or foe? Just not too close. Six six feet yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on in. Wow. <laughs> Look at this shroom sofa. Yeah, I mean. I'm obsessed. I got the assignment. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So obviously you're an incredible musician. Thank you. But I kind of want to go into the psyche of Jay Gray. Okay. Will you let me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, I've struggled with my mental health for a very long time. I was like 
going through this uphill battle of trying to find the right therapist. It was actually like actively making my mental health worse. Mm. I stumbled across microdosing, you know, I just gave it a go. I, I was in a position where I could. I think a lot of people aren't in a position to microdose because they maybe haven't tried psychedelics before. What if they do too much and then they're tripping all day and they've got to go to fucking work? What is microdosing? There is an option when you're doing any psychedelic to take a smaller dose, a microdose of that drug. Um, and when you do intake that specific amount, you're not meant to be seeing anything. You're not meant to be feeling actively like an active state of trip at all. If anything, it's, you know, it's just, <laughs> for a lack of better phrasing, like taking the edge off. I took it for depression and anxiety uh, when I was microdosing and it helped. So you're not anymore? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wish I was. I mean, I'm currently in a position where I take sertraline for my my um, anxiety and depression. And What's sertraline? Sertraline is uh, antidepressant. Doing psychedelics with that kind of medication? No bueno. No, there's. it's kind of, you wouldn't want to. Right. I think the thing with a lot of prescribed medicinal drugs that are for anxiety and depression, the major Thing that I fucking hate about them is you have to wean yourself on and you have to wean yourself off. I remember my, when I microdosed for the first time, I, I was like annoyed at how much better I felt. Right. Because I didn't want it to be the answer, right? Mm. Like how, how helpful is an right. illegal drug being, you know, the thing that makes me happier? It's just not ideal. So it's kind of frustrating for me. Mm. And that's why I think I did then think, well, maybe sertraline can do this for me too. When tripping, when not microdosing. There's a lot of things that I've experienced that really reassure me in my day-to-day -day life. If I'm ever feeling anxious, there's definitely a real grounding feeling that comes with knowing that I have been in places where I've felt complete bliss. I've noticed like how yeah, shrooms and psychedelics in general are just trending. Yeah. Um, have you noticed a sort of shift in like your friends also maybe looking at what you've experienced and wanting to try the same for yeah. themselves? Like yeah, definitely. I mean, as you said, like shrooms and frogs, shout out to frogs yeah. for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Shrooms and frogs are kind of like this whole aesthetic, yeah. now, which is cool and, and I love that like 100%. But I think with that has also come my friends and even my family kind of just talking about it or, or, you know, wanting it to be an option for them. Mm. And I think there was kind of like this stereotype that comes alongside with psychedelics that you're like this crazy, cool kid kind yeah. of like person. When Lost, losing your mind. Yeah, 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 yeah right. <laughs> and you believe in conspiracy oh, theories yeah, yeah, yeah. and like, I don't know. Whereas, you know, my friends know me and they're like, oh, you seem happier. Do you think there's a high expectation of finding like a cure or like finding that fix to your mental health? As, as you said, people are so ready for the cure to mental health. There's a high expectation because there's such a high demand of people like wanting to be happier than they are. Mm. It's food for thought. Yeah. Are we boring you? Yeah, he's like, where well, am I going to get some of these shoes? <laughs> So we've wound up finishing the day here at Reverse Cowgirl. My mom was like, are you sure you want a naked lady on your body? And I told her I've got quite a few already, so. <laughs> October last year, my dog passed away. And it was just like the kind of grief I've never felt before in my life. And um, in a weird way, I'm very thankful to her for allowing me to experience something like that. Because I think for a long time, I wanted to get in touch with my vulnerability because it's something I've struggled with being open to. 
she was just a big, big presence in my life. And at the end, she couldn't walk, so I used to push her in a big pram. And she's a big dog, so it was like a big pram. For me, with psychedelics, I'm worried that it would expose me to certain things that maybe I've been trying very hard not to face. And I don't like to get super emotional, so I worry that like, if I was to take a drop of acid, maybe it'd be like, I've discovered how depressed I am. <laughs> very obvious to me that everyone's experience with psychedelics is different and it's affected them in many different ways. But if there's one thing I've learned is that it's not something you take lightly. Up next on The Bigger Trip, we venture into the world of psychedelics and creative thinking. Can mind-altering substances help us tap into new realms of imagination and inspiration? <laughs>